Good morning, everyone. If you please stand as we begin our prayer. We come together today to give thanks to God for the gift of Mike's life, and as we commend him to the Lord, we do so with a confident faith that he is at peace with our risen Lord, living the fullness of eternal life. We begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. In the waters of baptism, Michael died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with God eternal glory. Welcome to Immaculate Conception Parish. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his Years ago, when Mike was baptized at St. Bridget's Church on the west side, he, like each of us that has been baptized, was clothed in a white garment to remind us that in this journey of life, we are embraced by our compassionate risen Lord. As a sign once again of that embrace by our God, I invite Mary Beth and Matt to place the paw in their dad's casket. On the day of his baptism, Michael put on Christ. On the day of Christ's coming, may he once again be clothed in glory, glory that is eternal. I invite Mary Lou to place Mike's medal on the casket, a sign of his devotion to our Lord, and always asking the protection of the Blessed Mother as a trooper and as a Christian. Good morning again, everyone. We thank you for joining us on this beautiful day to give thanks to God for Mike's life, as I said, as we commend him to the Lord. I know Mary Lou and the family are very pleased to have so many of you with us here this morning. 
Matt and Mary Beth and their families. Unfortunately, Michelle is unable to be with us as she lives in Georgia with her family and would have to be quarantined, but we are taping the Mass today, and we welcome Michelle and her family in prayer as we all join at the table of the Lord. Special welcome to Deacon Tim McAuliffe. Tim is a retired New York State trooper and a permanent deacon of the Diocese of Albany. Tim will be our homilist today, so we welcome him. And welcome all of you, especially a lot of Westsiders, Tipperary Hill people from St. Bridges, St. Pat's, and certainly all the troopers, New York State troopers, many active and some retired who are with us today. We pray for your continued safety and we are grateful for your service. And so as we enter into this sacred prayer now, we take just a moment of silence to prepare our hearts to receive our Lord in word and Eucharist. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, to whom mercy and forgiveness belong, hear our prayers on behalf of your servant Mike, whom you have called out of this world, and because he put his hope and trust in you, command that he be carried safely home to heaven and come to enjoy your eternal reward. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Be seated now for our scripture readings. Our first reading will be proclaimed by Mike and Mary Lou's granddaughter, Riley. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if in the eyes of men, indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide him in love. Because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Our second reading from the New Testament will be proclaimed by another grandchild, Thomas Nabin. A 
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Such is my gospel, for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains, like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We have a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. That very day, <clears throat> excuse me, that very day, the first day of the week, two of the disciples of Jesus were going to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them named Cleopas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And the stranger replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And the stranger said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them, and it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised, and has appeared to Simeon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he became known to them in the breaking of the bread. The good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Mary Lou, Mary Beth, and off in the distance, Michelle, Bailey, Riley, Ethan, Amelia, Thomas, Rory, Allison, and Sean. Father Ryan, our presider and the pastor of this parish, extends to you the sympathy of the parish on the passing of your husband, father, and grandfather, and a friend to many people represented by the people here. And Michael J. Navin, Jr. will be remembered in the prayers of this community. When Maureen and I heard the terrible, shattering news of the death of Mike, we were profoundly sorry that this bright light had been extinguished. We knew Michael had been in failing health these last years, and we knew that Mary Lou was the reason Michael lasted as long as he did. When you two married 56 years ago, Mary Lou, you had no idea that you would live out your promise of staying together in sickness and in health. You were heroic, Mary Lou. You were a blessing to Mike right through to the 1st of August and beyond. Looking at this box that I know Mike's body is still in, however his spirit, his soul, his life force will go on and on and go on for all eternity. Our souls came into being when our moms and dads and God make the miracle of conception happen. A soul lives forever. Our soul is immortal. It had a beginning, but it will have no end. Our souls are destined to be with God during our time on earth and then for all eternity to be with God in heaven. Usually when you enter a church, there's a basin or pool of water. We dip the fingers of our hand into the water and then make the sign of the greatest act of love, the sign of the cross. We make that sign because it's a reminder that Jesus promised each one of us at baptism that we were destined for heaven, that we would have a resurrection and we were destined to live, soul was less destined to live for all eternity. We make that gesture of using water in the sign of the cross to remind us that we were baptized into the body of Christ and we'll have a resurrection just like Jesus did and we'll go on to heaven, the main part of life. The Pope probably wouldn't back me on this, but I believe there's a real possibility there will be dogs in heaven. We will see our four-legged furry friends again Except for the pit bull my neighbor had who would insist on waking my parents any time I was past curfew coming home as a teenager. And I say that about dogs because I think heaven is going to be a place that we can't imagine and we're told it's going to be a place we can't imagine. And we pray that Michael will soon be there. We're gathered for Michael to send him off to the main part of life. If you listen to what is said in various language, languages, they invariably said not so much a finality gesture or word, but it invariably says that we're going to meet again. The French say a bientôt or till next time, where they say adieu to God. Spanish people say adios to God. The Germans say auf Wiedersehen until we meet again. The Jewish people will say sei gesund oder hitra ot. And the Irish, the language of the angels, of course, will, slay, will say schlanawalia, which means safe home. In those examples and others I've looked up, there is a little or no finality. There's always a sense of meeting one another again, that it's going to happen. I find that consoling and makes me realize our heritage does go back further than the iPad and the iPhone. The readings the family selected tell us what their expectations and hopes are at this moment. Riley read from the Book of Wisdom. That passage assures us that the just are in the hand of God and no pain will get to them. We hear too that we can hope in immortality for living forever and among the assurances that are set out we see that those who put their faith and trust in God can figure, can count on immortality, living forever. And among the assurances that are set out in that reading is that those who trust in the Lord shall understand truth. Those who trust in the Lord shall understand truth. Truth isn't so obvious to us today. You can compare newspaper or TV accounts any day on the same potential story and see the emphasis of what is left out or added. And we're also, it should be said, in the age of relativism. We're at a time when we're disconnected. The virus has proven that to me. And our reading from wisdom assures us that there is a truth, that there is truth, it's objective truth, and we can find and keep the truth and we should set, 
we should set, all set out to find and keep that truth. Thomas read for us a reading from a letter Paul sent to his friend Timothy. We are shown in that letter what is trustworthy. It says if we die with the Lord in our life, then we shall also live with the Lord. At the end of the reading, we are told and reminded if we are unfaithful, the Lord remains faithful. Even if we are unfaithful, he remains faithful. That's one of the many reasons you hear people say our God is an awesome God. He is awesome. Thinking of those readings in the life of Mike Navin as an undercover trooper and investigator, we can't pay someone, anyone, enough to do what he did and did very well for 25 years. The bums who are involved with drugs and weapons are doing the work of Satan. Mike had other cases. I remember one murder case that I knew about that took, uh, took Mike to New York City, and that mis miscreant went to prison. I have sketchy knowledge about a few of his investigations, and I do know he couldn't have been so successful without the continuous support of Mary Lou and his kids. I first met Mike when we were going through the steps of a promotional exam, and he always did well on the exams. And the scariest thing Mike was involved in at that time that I knew about was that when he went into the room where, at headquarters where the officers were conducting the oral exam, Mike sat down in front of the panel, and Mike had been awake all night on something back here out of Oneida, and he sat down, he had the beard then, which was a little different if you were taking the oral exam then, and he was, Mike was answering the second or third question when a room divider, a heavy room divider, fell over and the top edge of it hit the chair Mike was in. Months later, I heard two of the officers say that Mike Navin never stammered, paused, or got lost in answering that and other questions. His, response were, his responses were, as usual, always first rate. But he became known for how calm he was at that time. The gospel I proclaimed is from the last chapter of Luke's gospel. This is an appearance of Jesus after his death and resurrection. Two of the disciples were walking the two-hour trek to the village of Emmaus when a stranger joined up with them. The stranger asked why they look so sad. They are surprised he doesn't know about the calamitous event that had occurred to their friend in Jerusalem. With that, Jesus explained all the passages from the Hebrew scriptures that referred to events in the life of Christ. The stranger pointed out how Jesus fulfilled the promises and descriptions about the hope for Messiah. They went from being downhearted to insisting he stay with them for dinner. As is the ancient heritage of the Jewish people, at dining, there is a time when blessing is set over the bread. And in that very instance, there was a recognition, a realization, excitement, and a resolve to tell everyone that Jesus was alive. But the stranger disappeared then. They went immediately back to Jerusalem to share the good news that Jesus arose from the dead, and they saw him and had a meal with him. Michael Navin, because of his intelligence, innate kindness, and persistent pursuit of the truth, brought people to justice and was a singular individual who reminded each one of us to try and do the right thing every day, no matter the obstacle. Mike helped us at work to see there was a truth, and that truth could be found out. What you haven't heard me say is Mike wasn't the only, uh, only one out there arresting people. Michael was not the only, Michael was not just out there arresting people. He was also the good go-to guy when it came to the right way to handle ex parte orders. That's the complicated procedure where you ask a judge for the order to listen in on phone conversations. He used to get calls at the office we shared from troopers, ADAs, federal investigators, and prosecutors, and I never saw anybody, never heard of anybody that was better at that kind of very technical work. And then there are the men and women who point to Mike Navin as the one who extricated them from a downhill slide or from a sewer and then helped those people to successfully stay away from the insidious evil of unlawful use of prescription drugs and illegal drugs. I received a text from one of them who told me, Mike Navin saved my life, saved it again and again, 
I wouldn't have the life and family today or the homes I have if it wasn't for Mike Navin and his wife, who I could overhear say to Mike numerous times when I made 3 a.m. phone calls to him. She would say when she answered the phone and turned to Mike, apparently, and say, it's him. I know there were other people he helped, this man went on to say. We pray Mike Navin meets our brother and redeemer Jesus very soon. I'm sure Mike will hear the Lord say to him, welcome to the main part of life, my brother. You were kind, you always tried, you wanted to do the right thing, and always tried to do the right thing. You knew the truth was attainable. Next time you see a state trooper, know that the black stripe on their trousers is a testament to all the men and women like Mike who gave of themselves to the rest of us and lived the life of a state trooper. So we say to this talented, unique man, well done. We will see you again, we know, in God's good time. Slana Walia, safe home, Michael Navin. As we continue our prayer now with the prayer of the faithful, I invite Gary Corbett, retired New York State trooper investigator, and good friend to lead us in this prayer. In faith and confidence, we pray today for the repose of the soul of Mike, for the comfort of his family, for the needs of the community and our world. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Michael received the light of Christ and was given a promise of eternal life. Lord, bring him into the kingdom as a good and faithful servant. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord, our prayer. Lord. Our brother in the faith, Michael, was nourished with the body of Jesus. Lord, welcome into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, and for those who minister to them, may they believe that God will give them the strength and the courage to see it through. We pray to the Lord. Lord, the Lord hear our prayer. For all our deceased family and friends, we pray they have found internal joy wrapped safely in the arms of our Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For may the Lord watch over all who in endeavor to protect, serve, especially the deputies, agents, investigators, sergeants, troopers, and all men and women on patrol this day and every day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. May we, f may we follow Mike's example to love our families, perform our duties well, be good and faithful friends, always trusting in the goodness and mercy of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pause for a moment of silence for personal intentions. For these intentions, the intentions of our hearts, we place them before our God in great faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. There will be just a slight change for Holy Communion today. We thank you again during this COVID time for wearing your masks. When it comes time for first or for Holy Communion, rather, um, this is a little bit of change with the funeral director. We'll need to know also there'll be just two lines for Holy Communion. There'll be one over here, and everybody from here comes forth and goes around. So one over here, and then one over here, and again you come around and go. Please keep social distance as you come up for Holy Communion, single file, and as you approach the priest or deacon, please wear your mask, receive communion in the hand, step to the side, and then pull down your mask to receive Eucharist. Thank you. Thank you. 
Friends, let us pray that our sacrifice of bread and wine and our very lives this day may be acceptable gifts to our loving God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his church, for our good and the good of all his holy. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Michael, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel or be seated, whichever is more conducive for you. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop, with all the clergy, the religious, all the faithful who serve your church. Remember your servant Michael, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, protect of the Holy Family, the Apostles, St. Mary and Cope, our diocesan saint, and all the saints, who would please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now let us stand. In faith and in confidence, we pray together as Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, may that peace of our Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Jesus, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father, the Holy Spirit, we lift our life to him. Again, communion will be distributed in this aisle to my left and then this aisle to my right. Please come out the sides and go around. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
at the conclusion of our prayer today, um, the family will be going to the cemetery. You're certainly welcome to join them there. Again, thank you for all for joining us. I know it's a great comfort to Mary Lou and the family to have so many here and so many others who are unable to be with us, but it will be on the, uh, the tape, um, and we appreciate the opportunity to do that here. <clears throat> today we certainly pray for Mike, for the repose of his soul, and, and thanksgiving that his suffering has ended, and thanks to Mary Lou for her wonderful care of Mike over the years, as the deacon said, and thanks to our deacon for the wonderful homily. But our condolences to Mike's family and, and the assurance of our prayers. Um, Mike, like all the state troopers, offered great service uh, to the community, and we are grateful to him, to all the troopers, active and retired. We appreciate your service to so many people in keeping us all safe. Um, Mike came from the West Side Tipperary Hill area, St. Bridges and St. Patrick's for school, and came from good genes, and we're glad he was able to celebrate that heritage and certainly offer his life and service to so many as so many of you do. So we thank you again for joining us. So we stand now and conclude our prayer. O oh God, you are water for our thirst and manna in our desert. We praise you for the life of Mike and bless your mercy that has brought his sickness to an end. Now we beg that same endless mercy to raise him to new life, nourished by the food and drink of heaven. May he rest forever in the joy of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And again, as you depart church today, we ask you when you do depart to go aisle by aisle and please continue to keep the social distance as you leave. And so, my friends, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness, and may it strengthen our hope. For one day we shall joyfully greet Mike again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings which you bestowed upon Mike in this life, for they are signs to us of your goodness, of our fellowship with the saints in Christ Jesus. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayer. Open the gates of paradise to your servant. Help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mike, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new, the eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels welcome you. Where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you have eternal rest. And may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face, the rains fall soft upon your fields, and until we meet again, may God hold you in the 
hollow of his hand. May Mike's soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.